Good morning, my dear friends, and lovely to have your company at this hour, where we've had a pretty horrendous night with incessant rain and some flooding, but all is well. This morning, let us remember our dear sister Jan's family member, Morris, who died at 92. We pray for our dear sister Jan and family today, but I would like to dedicate our morning prayer to the global peace, not the global peace, apologies, to the climate uh, summit, important meetings in Paris, an issue very close to my heart, especially when I looked at the world news and the little children being kept from school in Beijing where they could hardly see themselves with the dense smog. We pray that the developing worlds will support those who are the worst polluters and that this sacred gift, Mother Earth, will be respected and that we can all live a longer life free of so many illnesses that are man-made. So welcome after that little speech. I want to light this light this morning for that important summit in Paris, but also for Morris, for our dear Jan, and that member of our family who's very special to them all. And I know that he's at peace. So let us begin. We light this light from the, from the bottom of our hearts in recognition of all that God has done for us, for the simple things we take for granted, for the running water, the fresh air that we breathe, for the clothes that we wear, for the food that is provided for us on our tables, for friendship and for peace. And we begin with our prologue to our Thursday morning communions. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and, excuse me, great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Thursday morning we commune with the angel of water saying, angel of water, enter my blood and give the water of life to my whole being. As you say this, you contemplate the waters of earth in rain as we have in rivers, lakes, seas, or anywhere, and especially all the flooding, and wish you could go to Africa and the west coast of America, and that the currents of the angel of water are left intensifying and directing the circulation of the blood. Forgive me, angel of water, but you have a sense of humor. Let us begin the office of lords. And we begin with the entrance antiphon. Let us adore the Lord who is to come. O God, come to my aid. O Lord, make haste and help me. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. And our hymn this morning, <clears throat> Hear the herald, voice resounding, Christ is near, it seems to say. Cast away the dreams of darkness, welcome Christ, the light of day. <clears throat> Wakened by this solemn warning, let the earthbound soul arise. Christ, her son, all sloth dispelling, shines upon the morning skies. So when next he comes in glory, shrouding all the earth in fear, May he then, as our defender, on the clouds of heaven appear. And now for the office for the second Thursday of Advent, the Antiphon, Lord, rouse up your might and come to our help. We now read Psalm 79, and the theme of the psalm, Lord, come to visit your vine. O shepherd of Israel, hear us, you who lead Joseph's flock, 
shine forth from your cherubim throne upon Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. Lord God of hosts, how long will you frown on your people's plea? You have fed them with tears for their bread, an abundance of tears for their drink. You have made us the taunt of our neighbours. Our enemies laugh us to scorn. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. Before it, you cleared the ground. It took root and spread through the land. The mountains were covered with its shadows, the cedars of God with its boughs. It stretched out its branches to the sea, to the great river it stretched out its shoots. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked up by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vast and, sorry, visit this vine and protect it. The vine your right hand has planted. Men have burnt it with fire and destroyed it, may they perish at the frown of your face. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. And now the Gloria, glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, rouse up your might and come to our help. And the second antiphon, the Lord has done marvellous things, let them be made known to the whole world. We now have a canticle reading from the prophet Isaiah and the theme of the canticle, the rejoicing of a redeemed people. I thank you, Lord, you were angry with me, but your anger has passed and you give me comfort. Truly God is my salvation. I trust I shall not fear for the Lord is my strength, my song, he is my saviour. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to all his people. Declare the greatness of his name. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds deeds, make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. We pray the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord has done marvellous things. Let them be made known to the whole world. And now our third antiphon. Ring out your joy to God, our strength. Our final reading is Psalm 80, and the theme of the psalm, Solemn Renewal of the Covenant. Ring out your joy to God, our strength. Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the sweet sounding harp and the lute. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, when the moon is full on our feast. For this is Israel's law, a command of the God of Jacob. 
He imposed it as a rule on Joseph when he went out against the land of Egypt. A voice I did not know said to me, I freed your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were freed from the load. You called in distress and I saved you. I answered, concealed in the storm cloud. At the waters of Meribah, I tested you. Listen, my people, to my warning. O Israel, if you would only heed. Let there be no foreign god among you, no worship of an alien god. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. But my people did not heed my word, and Israel would not obey. So I left them in the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own designs. Oh, that my people would heed me, that Israel would walk in my ways. At once I would subdue their foes, turn my hand against their enemies. The Lord's enemies would cringe at their feet, and their subjection would last forever. But Israel I would feed with finest wheat, and fill them with honey from the rock. Let us pray the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ring out your joy to God, our strength. And our special readings for this Thursday morning of Advent reads, and the first scripture reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 8. Rain righteousness, you heavens, let the skies pour down, let the earth open to receive it, that it may bear fruit of salvation with righteousness in blossom at its side. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the short response read, the glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem, like the sun he will rise over you. The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem, like the sun he will rise over you. His glory will appear in your midst. Excuse me. The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem, like the sun he will rise over you. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The glory of the Lord will shine on you, Jerusalem, like the sun he will rise over you. And the Benedictus Antiphon, I will help you, says the Lord. I am your rescuer, the Holy One of Israel. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to join me for the Benedictus, the Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and he has redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of David his servant, as he promised through our prophets from of old, a Savior who would free us from our sin, from the hands of all our enemies. So his love for our fathers is revealed and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham our father to grant us that free from fear and safe from the hands of our enemies that we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. And as for you, little child, you shall become a prophet of God, the Most High. You shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways before him to make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sin and the loving kindness of our God, who visits those who sit in darkness and those who dwell in the shadow of death. He will guide them to the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, 
to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I will help you, says the Lord. I am your rescuer, the Holy One of Israel. And now we come to our morning intercessions. Though the Lord's coming is at hand, we must have patience, for he will come in his own time, in his own way. Response, Lord Jesus, help us to believe that you are coming. And we repeat, Lord Jesus, help us to believe that you are coming. We live in a world weighed down by unbelief. Lord, increase our faith. Response, Lord Jesus, help us to believe that you are coming upon the richness and complexity of man's thought among the theories and philosophies of our world today. Let your coming shed its own glorious light. Response, Lord Jesus, help us to believe that you are coming. Give us the strong faith of the apostles and their fervor in preaching your word. Response, Lord Jesus, help us to believe that you are coming. Let us love the church and all religions, for we are all children of the one true God, which continue to proclaim to all ages the reality of your coming. Response, Lord Jesus, help us to believe that you are coming. So for a moment of silence, we come into the presence of unconditional love and we take the words of Jesus to our heart for he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am with you. So if anything is troubling you or someone you're concerned about, name them, bless them and release them to God in a mindset of gratitude and conclude with the three-worded prayer, thank you, God. This morning, we remember our dear sister Jan and her husband John and the family traveling to York, several hours drive from where they live in St. Helens to attend to the funeral of Morris who died aged 92. We hold the whole family in prayer this morning and for dear Jan's friend, Sheila. We remember dear sister Sue and her friend Mary and all her family. <clears throat> and we remember Brother Paul and we give thanks that Courtney is now back home safe and well. But I want to pray a special prayer of gratitude, Lord, for my dear brother Paul, a true soul brother, and for the wonderful work he's done for me in creating this beautiful banner to reflect Celtic Franciscan spirituality. Lord, we are truly thankful for being instrumental in the two communities coming together as one loving voice, united in heart, in spirit, and in Franciscan joy. Lord, bless Brother Paul today, and bless all the brothers and sisters of the Order of Franciscan Hermits and the Aromatic Servants with Brother Bjorn and young Brother Mark. We pray for Brother Paul's friend, Joey, and Sean. This morning I remember this important global conference on global warming in Paris and I just commit the whole process, the arguing, the toing and froing, and I just give it to you Lord God and pray that St. Francis will oversee all the minutiae, dot the I's and stroke the T's so that we can take responsibility for this beautiful earth and the atmosphere that we are destroying through culpable greed. And we praise you, God, this day for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and we look forward expectedly to the year of mercy. But we pray for all religious leaders to unite, to come together and to exhibit your compassion and unconditional love 
to all members of your family, regardless of whether they're believers or non-believers. We pray within the Christian community to become less judgmental, more forgiving, more tolerant, and more loving. In the words of our dear brother Gandhi, who said, I like your Christ, but not your Christians, because your Christians are not like your Christ. So I leave that with you today and pray that it will touch your heart as it did mine many years ago. And with dear brother Paul, we pray for all in the Teo community and for myself. Thank you, Paul. And for dear brother Rob, for the Muslim community that they know that they are loved and in the prayers of many Christians, we pray that the, the senator being put forward by the Republican Party, Mr. Donald Trump, who's inciting racial tension here in the UK, if he's allowed, and despite a petition of over 300,000 voting to have him banned from the UK, I believe that he should be allowed to come and to face truth, to face his own demons, and not to be winning votes on pure blasphemy and inciting racial tension. We pray for the Muslim community of the United Kingdom and the USA. There are good people in the Muslim faith who respect the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad to a non-violent way of living, as many do in the Christian church. We pray for tolerance and that we as Franciscans will be at the, on the front line, not inciting hatred, but bringing love and, ex, and demonstrating the Beatitudes of Christ in how we live out our faith, that we walk the talk rather than talk the walk. And with Brother Paul, he's saying, can we ban him from the USA? Well, he may be rich in the eyes of the world, but for those of us who love God and who have surrendered our lives in service to God and who have taken a vow of detachment, where we have surrendered everything, yet we are rich, spiritually rich, I sense in my heart that Mr. Donald Trump is really very spiritually impoverished and playing to the sympathy vote. But we pray for him. We pray for him and that the people of America won't be so gullible and that they stand up for righteousness, integrity, and especially truth. So let us conclude before I go into a democratic speech or just as a speech to support dear President Obama, whom I love dearly and respect. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us this day the strength, the courage, the fearlessness, to glorify you in how we live our life. Protect us from the times when we have failed you, when we've deceived one another, when we have violated your love in thought, word, and deed with our brothers and sisters. Protect us from the forces of darkness, negativity, despair, and gullibility. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer this second Thursday of Advent reads, <clears throat> Christ, sorry, clear a pathway, Lord, in our hearts to make ready for your only Son, so that when he comes, we may serve you in sincerity of heart. Are you listening, Donald Trump? 
we make our prayer to our Lord Jesus the Christ, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And that, dear friends, brings us to the end of morning prayer. And now for the blessing from the beautiful Celtic Christian Church of Iona, the blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the animal kingdom be in your heart this day and every day you live. Amen. As I blow out this light, I blow the unconditional selfless love of a father mother God who's calling you today to agape. Amen. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, Solo di carita, salam alaikum, peace, and thank you for being here at this hour. I pray you have a beautiful day or sleep wherever you may be, and may I wish our dear brother Paul a restful sleep. God bless you, dear friend, and thank you for your loving support to our Franciscan community. Peace be with you all. Amen.